League final, which happened in the football over the weekend, which was the intermediate one. Um, uh, four goals and nine points, Leash two goals and ten. And out of all the games that we called for on the weekend, this is the one where we called it the most accurately. We pointed out how Leash have conceded quite a lot of goals in the league campaign, and they were coming up against a certain Amy Mackin. And she hit three goals and three points in this game. All three of her goals came in the first half. As Arma romped really to 4 9 to 2 10, they win by. Um, Aoife McCoy got the other goal for Arma, but just that burst in the first half, just ridiculous. And Amy Mackin at it again. Yeah, and you have to say, you no, know, Amy Mackin is the best player in the country. I, I know do. there's Mickey Wall, I know there's Emma Duggan, I know there's Shea for O'Shea, but I have to say, this. This player is absolutely ridiculous. Look, yeah. if, if we're talking about David Clifford here, David Clifford levels, you're saying outstanding oh, for David Clifford. Amy Mackin is the David Clifford of NGFA. There's no Indeed. doubt about that. Three goals in the in nine minutes. Yeah. <laughs> My God, that is incredible. You know, I have to, I have to say, even when she um, kind of broke through as being one of the best players in NGFA in 2020. You were thinking, I think she scored a hat trick that night against Toronto as well, as far as I remember. Mm-hmm. That was incredible as well. And you're thinking, and it's it's a shame to be honest that she's going down to AFLW because she is by far and away the best player in, on the island at the moment. Incredible player. She is helped by Ethan McCoy, excellent. Blahine as well. Blahine's assist. It's kind of like it's so similar to Kerry men's football, if you know what I mean. Because you have yeah. that uh, in bond, you pawed in David for Ker- in the Kerry footballers, you have and Amy for the Armand uh, ladies footballers. It's it's weird, really, but um, but it's kind of true because Blahin, I think she assisted maybe three goals yesterday as well. Outstanding showing. She got two points herself, which was brilliant. And even the girls coming off the bench, like Neve Real definitely added a bit of zest coming off the bench, scoring a point. Kelly Mallon. It wasn't having her best, but she still got a point on the board. So well done to Armand. Brilliant, brilliant victory. But for Leash, like Leash, a role Fitzpatrick, you have to um, mention her as well. Four points from play. That's incredible. Yeah. Incredible scoring rate. And another player going down to AFLW. I know this isn't part of really the game um, that we're talking about, Seamus, but it's kind of upsetting in a way that these sorts of players are going down to AFLW and uh, leaving ladies football um, by the way. So because Rowan Fitzpatrick and Amy Mackin are two of the best players in the country at the moment. And, Without doubt. And you yeah. look at, you know, Vicky Wall and the like, like that is literally the best players in the game are going to AFLW. Cora Staunton's been playing over there. I know she retired recently. And to, in my mind, she's the greatest um, player that, is, uh, that I've seen playing the game. Right, well, one of for sure, and you look at like Breach Corkery has something like eighteen All Ireland medals, like so she has to be in the conversation as well. But um, no, Cora Stanton spent the last few years of her career playing over in AFLW, and it's it's one of those things that you would look at it and say it would just be great if we could keep all these players playing the GAA in, in, instead, and that's one of the things that definitely has to be looked at because with me in Dublin there. There was a real rivalry building there. There was a real like storyline that, that, that you could keep up with. And with Eamon Murray gone now and with Vicky Wall and did, going to Australia and, and things like that, like I do genuinely think like they've missed the trick there like with, with the marketing and, and stuff like that. And I know it's an amateur game and I know that you know the players play of their own want and of their own desire and they play for the passion and for representing their team. That could have been a serious rivalry. Like, and I know it was, but I, I feel like it could have done more. And for players like Amy Mackin and for players like, you know, around Fitzpatrick, I get it. I get why you go. I get why Colin O'Reardon went. I get why Zach too, he went. Because if you're not playing on the best team, and it's more applicable this for Colin O'Reardon and for Zach too, he, because I actually do think that the structure in the ladies' Gaelic football, as we've talked about many times before is way better than the men's structure because every year you go into the competition that you can win it and like you're at the level that you have got on merit and each team going into each competition has a really good chance of winning it but when Armagh have gotten to the senior level it does seem like it's Amy Mackin against the world sometimes and I understand why she'd be tempted to go to Australia. I understand definitely why Colin O'Reardon and Zach too, he looked at it and said, realistically, am I going to win in All-Ireland? No. And then the AFL come calling. I get why you go. Yeah, 
It's it's a it's a difficult one, isn't it? Because uh, you look at you look at uh, Amy Mack and you look at Vicky Wall. They're the best players in the country. But then when you look at the best men's players in the country, David Clifford, Dermot Connolly. This is off the off top of my head. No, yeah. Darren McCurry. They wouldn't go down to AFLW or or yeah. AFL, should I say? Why, like, you know? Yeah. And that's that's why we're asking this. Why Conor Reardon and Zach Tui went down? Because realistically, Leash and Tipperary are not going to win the All Ireland. Yeah. Men's football, they aren't simply aren't. But whereas Armagh have a real possibility to win the All Ireland, so do Meath, so do Cork with Eric O'Shea gone down, yeah. so do Dublin with Sinead Goldrick going down as well. And you're questioning why are the best players on the bigger teams going down to AFLW? I suppose there is a positive in all this the fact that they could go and play for their counties early on in the season, but then yeah. go for the second part of the season, the AFLW. But then that's a loss for clubs, then. You know, for Eric yeah, no, O'Shea, like for it. example, McCroom, it's a loss for him. It's a loss for Shane O'Neill's with Amy Mackin. It's a sh- loss for uh, Fox Rock, I think, is Shane yeah, Gordon. So it's it's going to be a loss for them. So that's a big thing. So that means the club scene in ladies football is actually getting hurt more than the inter-county scene. And that, to be honest, is quite sad when you think about it. Yeah, no, without doubt. And uh, look, it's, it's a definitely... A wider debate for another day as to how this problem could be fixed because I do genuinely think it, it's got to the stage now where it is an issue because these players aren't playing for the clubs now they're going and playing in Australia. At least we still see them in the inter county season. That's the one thing that I will say. At least we're still going to see Amy Mack and Vicky Wall around Fitzpatrick strutting their stuff in the championship this year. And definitely, if you are someone that likes watching players stick the ball into the back of the net, then watch Amy Mackin because.